The second variation of the chi-squared test statistic you will learn is the chi-squared test for independence. The table on the slide is taken from table 15.4 on page 522 of your text and shows color preferences according to personality types. The null hypothesis for the chi-squared test for independence states that the two variables being measured are independent. That is, for each individual, the value obtained for one variable is not related to or influenced by the value for the second variable. And there are two versions of how one might interpret the outcome of the chi-square test statistic. Version 1. In this version, the data are viewed as a single sample with each individual measured on two variables. And the goal is to evaluate the relationship between the two variables. For example, the goal is to determine whether there is a consistent, predictable relationship between personality and color preference. That is, if I know your personality, will it help me to predict your color preference? Version 2. In the second version, the data are viewed as two or more separate samples representing two or more separate populations. The goal of the chi-square test is to determine whether there are significant differences between the populations. For example, the data would be viewed as a sample of n equals 50 introverts, top row, and a separate sample of n equals 150 extroverts, bottom row. The chi-square test will determine whether the distribution of color preferences for introverts is significantly different from the distribution of color preferences for extroverts. The null hypothesis for the chi-square test of independence is articulated depending on which version of interpretation one is planning on using. The test of independence involves a data set that has two variables, each with multiple categories. Under the first version, one is hypothesizing that within a single population, there is no relationship between the two variables. Under the second version, one is hypothesizing that for two separate populations, that there is no difference between the two variables composed of frequencies from the two populations. Remember I said earlier that we will be using the same chi-square formula for both variations of the chi-square test and that the difference will be on how we calculate the expected frequencies. For the test of independence, we calculate the expected frequencies using the observed frequencies. The formula is shown on the slide, and what it is telling you to do is to first compute an overall total for each row and each column, as well as an overall n for your sample data. Then, for each cell, you multiply the relevant row total by the relevant column total, and then divide by the overall n. Clicked on the worked example of a chi-square test of independence next to the link to this video to see the formula in action. Finally, for the test of independence, we compute degrees of freedom using the formula r minus 1 times c minus 1, where r is the number of data rows and c is the number of data columns. It excludes what you computed for row and column totals.